Chimambo Nyoka, Executive Director of UN Women, Your Majesties, Excellencies, He for She Champions, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen. Uh, let me say, first of all, I'm very, very pleased to be with you this morning because I always look forward to attend the He for She meetings. Let me begin this morning by placing due emphasis on the importance and place of women. More than half the world population <coughs> comprises women. In most traditional societies, women are the foundations and keepers of societies. Women are our first teachers and healers in this world. Women have always been active, productive agents in every economy. And there is no society that can make meaningful progress while marginalizing women. However, the human race has often treated women as if it is a crime to be a woman. Men have often taken authority upon themselves of inflicting pain and suffering on women for no other reason other than being a woman. This is wrong. For a long time in human history, gender differences have been used as reasons for inflicting violence on women. We saw severe forms of violence being inflicted on women in spite of our claims to be civilized in our modern time. We saw two women being victimized in domestic violence. We see girls being taken out of school and being forced into painful marriages against their will. We saw innocent women and girls being subjected to mob justice. We see women and girls being trafficked around the world for unholy businesses. Unfortunately, poverty is a human condition that makes women more vulnerable to violence. The worst victims of poverty are women. Women who are caught up in poverty are often less empowered to protect themselves from gender-based violence. Poor education is another factor that makes women more vulnerable. Then we have other factors that encourage gender-based violence, such as one, cultural norms, two, legal systems, three, religious, religion, and others. Therefore, the fight against gender-based violence must always take an integrated approach. The first thing we need to do to create an appropriate legal framework where women are protected by law and the laws must be enforced. But legal frameworks only work within a culture that is perceptive to legal prescriptions. This means we must always endeavor to work with local leaders who are custodians of culture. It's not enough to have the right laws. We must also have the willingness of the people to comply with the laws against gender-based violence. We must secure the participation of local leaders and various stakeholders who influence beliefs in our social fabric. Then both men and women must be convinced that the laws against gender-based violence are in their own interest to follow. The next critical step is to empower women with education and economic resourcefulness. The empowerment of women Using education especially focuses on the girl child. When it comes to education, I often think that skilled education is one of the best means of empowering women to get jobs and businesses from themselves. Skilled education can easily target the majority of society who are not able to go as far as university education. Skilled education can easily empower women with disabilities but skilled development works best to people who are also knowledgeable. 
It means we must encourage every girl to access education as far as she can go. Access to education is imperative. Within this holistic approach, Maui has undertaken a number of integrated measures to end gender-based violence. Our strategy begins with a girl child because we need to change our society and its future once and for all. While men are low ending early marriages, we want every child, every girl child, to earn education and get empowered to protect ourselves. This law will operationalize within a national strategy on ending child marriage. We have mobilized traditional leaders and work with them closely to protect the girl child. Most parents now realize the value of girls' education. We have a specific campaign of ensuring that girls who stray into early marriages are readmitted in school. If the girl gave birth, most parents now accept responsibility of taking care of the child so that the girl can go back to school. We have started a number of school programs that encourage girls to stay in school. We have increased our national budget by 14% for child protection. This includes protection of the girl child. We have stepped up vigilance against domestic violence by, among other things, establishing a unit within our police station that specifically attends domestic violence issues. As government, we are now moving towards establishing a women empowerment fund. We are building community technical colleges across the country. This is a means of empowering youth and women to be economically self-dependent. Let me tell you a story of how community colleges empowered one girl who was subjected to gender-based violence. She was a young girl when she was pregnant. I believe she was 13. She left school and went home to nurse her pregnancy. The man denied responsibility and left her to raise the child alone. When he advertised the first intake of community technical college, she applied and enrolled. She was employed as supervisor of a construction company after she completed. Now she has built a three-bedroom house in the best part of town. One of the most amazing and moving stories through education. This is how skills education in our community technical colleges is serving young women. As a country, we have learned that fighting gender-based violence should be a comprehensive social program. Let us empower women and encourage them to say, nothing is to be done about me without my consent. I thank you for your attention. Thank you.